Welcome to the session on organization of knowledge library classification. In this session, we will discuss species of library classification. The primary use of the scheme of library classification is the intellectual organization, storage and retrieval units of thought and information. S. R. Ranganathan highlights four purpose of library classification. First one, storage of information in helpful sequence. Second, retrieval on demand or in anticipation of demand information pinpointedly, exhaustively and expeditiously without the admixture of any irrelevant information. Next, Balanced selection of books and other reading materials for a library in close correlation to the interests of its clientele. Fourth one, formation of special topic sequence in the library to meet the needs of particular groups of readers exactly and without loss of readers time and tempo. Kanna 1994. Species of library classification. For the purpose of classifying documents in the library, a number of schemes with different structures of universe of knowledge are available. It will be interesting to study the difference found in each of them and group those having resemblance into one kind of species. The classification schemes can be broadly classified into two groups. They are 1. Enumerative classification scheme, 2. Faceted classification scheme. Enumerative classification scheme. Enumerative classification scheme is a scheme of classification in which the universe of subject is divided into a number of simple and compound classes. The dictionary meaning of enumeration is to list or count. It consists of single schedule enumerating all subjects of the past, the present and the anticipated future. It means that the class number of different subjects is enumerated in the schedule. There is no separate supplementary schedule of common isolates to construct a number. Example 1. Library of Congress classification LC 1905 2. Riders International classification RIC 1961 Dewey Decimal classification DDC 1876 Types of enumerative classification schemes. There are two types of enumerative classification schemes. Purely enumerative classification scheme and almost enumerative classification scheme. Purely enumerative classification scheme. It consists of single schedule enumerating all subjects of the past, the present and the anticipated future. Ranganathan 1956. It is long schedule but it is very difficult to accommodate newly emerging subjects in affiliatory se sequence among existing sequence. The class numbers are not broken down into facets using meaningful connecting symbols. So it is monolithic. Library of Congress classification scheme and Riders International classification scheme are examples of purely enumerative classification schemes. Library of Congress classification. It is a long schedule of 11,300 pages in 45 volumes. It enumerates all possible types of subjects of the past, the present and the future and does not provide independent schedules of common isolates. There is no provision for synthesis of numbers. Notations consist of Indo-Arabic numerals and Roman capitals. The class numbers are monolithic. Next is Riders International Classification Scheme. It is a long single schedule enumerating all basic and compound subjects. It enumerates about 18,000 subjects each represented by three digits. No separate schedules for common isolates. Therefore, there is no possibility to construct class numbers. Next is Almost Enumerative Classification Scheme. It consists of large schedule enumerating most of the subjects of the past, the present and the foreseeable future and in addition a few schedules of common isolates. 
It enumerates not only basic subjects, but also compound subjects with the help of schedules of common isolates. It is possible to construct class number of a few more compound subjects. Example of almost enumerative classification schemes are subject classification by J. D. Brown and Dewey decimal classification by Melvin Dewey. Subject classification. It consists of main schedule and categorical table. The main schedule enumerates subject most of which are compound subject. The categorical table enumerates isolates. Additional compound subject can be formed by combining the subjects enumerated in the main schedule and the isolates enumerated in the categorical table. But the list of isolate is far too inadequate to accommodate the newly emerging subjects. Dewey decimal classification DDC consists of long schedule of compound subject and it provides independent schedules of time, space and form isolates. Provision of common isolates which can be attached to the class number taken from the main tables along with the add to device have enabled in DDC to withstand to some extent the pressure of newly emerging subjects. Kanna 1994. Let us look into the advantages. First one, it enumerates basic and compound subjects. Second, a few schedules of common isolates are provided and it is possible to construct class numbers for a few more compound subjects which are not enumerated in the schedule. Now, disadvantages. First one, it is a large schedule. Second, most of the class numbers would be monolithic. Third, new subjects have not been enumerated and also for which the class numbers cannot be constructed by combining enumerated subjects and common isolates. Faceted classification scheme. It admits facet analysis, provides rules for the arrangement of facets and provides separate schedule for different kinds of facet needed for different subjects. It also provides connecting symbols and admits of the synthesis of the basic facet numbers and the isolate numbers of a subject into a class numbers. It does not provide a ready made class numbers for compound subjects. The compound subjects are analyzed into their fundamental constituents and these enumerated under separate schedules for different facets under each basic subjects. It provides meaningful connecting symbols for each facet. Types of faceted classification scheme. First one, almost faceted classification scheme. Second, fully but rigidly faceted classification scheme. Third, almost fully faceted classification scheme. Fourth, freely faceted classification scheme. Almost faceted classification scheme. It consists of a large schedule enumerating most of the subjects of the past, the present and the anticipated future and in addition a few schedules of common isolates and also some schedules of special isolates. Ranganathan 1967. In addition to schedules of main subjects, it enumerates some schedule of common isolate and special isolate for each subject. It is possible to construct class number of compound subjects. Therefore, it is greater capacity than enumerative classification scheme. The schedules of common isolates and schedules of special isolates permit us to construct class numbers of compound subjects which are not enumerated in the schedule. However, this provision is not very extensive as in a truly faceted scheme, but it is much limited. Universal Decimal Classification and Bibliographical Classification Scheme BC, are examples of almost faceted classification scheme. Universal Decimal Classification UDC 1905. It enumerates lengthy schedule, 
provides ready made class number of most of the subjects. In addition to these, it provides independent schedules of common auxiliaries of form, time, place, language, point of view, materials and persons and persons characteristic. Distinctive indicator digits have been provided for attaching two main UDC numbers. Language isolates, race and nationality isolates are not common isolates. In addition, schedules of special isolates for use in compound subjects going with certain enumerated basic and compound subjects also have been given. It is recommended the use of colon which allows for the use of the sum of the enumerated subjects as facets in the form of compound subjects. In addition, the colon has been employed to form complex subjects. The use of colon and other connecting symbols used in UDC for construction of compound subjects. So, the class numbers are polylithic. Bibliographic classification scheme BC. It enumerates large schedules of basic and compound subjects and also enumerates common form subdivisions, common subdivisions of persons, places, languages, ethnic groups and periods. In addition to these, it provides seven auxiliary schedules enumerating historical, physiological subdivisions and 31 tables of special auxiliary schedules. Synthesis of numbers from different table is possible as in the case of UDC. Therefore, this scheme is more or less as flexible to accommodate new subjects as UDC. The compound class number in BC is polylithic because it uses connecting digits and other in the formation of compound subjects. Khanna 1994. Now the advantages. First one, it enumerates basic and compound subjects. Second, due to provision of a few schedules of common isolates and also some schedules of special isolates, it will be possible to construct class numbers of more compound subjects. Next one, the class numbers will be polylithic. Now the disadvantages. As in the most faceted scheme for classification, most of the subjects of the past, the present and the anticipated future would be enumerated. Therefore, the class numbers for different subjects would generally be long. Fully but rigidly faceted classification scheme. In this scheme of classification, the facets and their sequence are predetermined for all the subjects going with the basic class. Ranganathan 1967. This means that a facet formula is provided for each basic class. A faceted scheme for classification consists of schedules of basic classes, special isolates and common isolates only. It also provides some devices for sharpening existing isolates. Class number for compound and complex subjects are not available ready made. They have to be synthesized every time according to specified rules of the schemes concerned. Thus, the class numbers of such subjects synthesized are polylithic and their structure with facets is transparent. Example, Colin classification version 1 consists of edition 1 1933, edition 2 1939 and edition 3 1950. Almost freely faceted classification scheme. In a rigidly faceted scheme of classification, the facets and their sequence are predetermined for all the subjects going with a basic class Ranganathan 1967. This leads to greater deal of rigidity because the use of different indicator digits for diverse kind of facets that is P, M, E, S, T. And the concepts of rounds and levels removed the severe rigidity in the number and sequence of facets that can occur in a compound subjects. However, some rigidity lurked in respect of levels of facets within a round. 
it is on account of this that it was not freely faceted in full measure. Examples Colin classification version 2, Kansas of addition 4, 1952, addition 5, 1957, addition 6, 1960, and addition 6 with annexure 1963. Freely faceted classification scheme. It is the last stage in the evolution of library classification. With the aid of sector notation, the rigidity in the number of levels of facets and their sequence in a round have almost been removed. Moreover, some facets originally considered as levels have been recognized to be sub facets in a facet of one and the same level. Above all, it recognizes that facets belong to compound subjects and not to basic subjects. Therefore, predetermination of the facets for all the compound subjects likely to go with any basic subject is ruled out. This type of scheme is known as freely faceted classification scheme. Example, Colin classification version 3 consists of addition 7 1987. Analytico synthetic classification scheme. An analytico synthetic classification scheme recognizes the compound nature of specific subjects. Each constituent term is translated into class symbol and the subject is represented by the aggregate of such symbols. It is a generic term used to denote any scheme in which a compound subject is first analyzed into its facets in the idea plane and later synthesized in the verbal plane and in the notational plane respectively. It provides connecting symbols and permits the synthesis of the basic class and isolate numbers of a subject into its class numbers. All the additions of CC are fully analytico synthetic in nature. UDC has a slight touch of analytico synthetic nature. Comparison between enumerative and faceted schemes of classification. Now we can see a table on the screen. We have enumerative classification scheme and faceted classification scheme. Under enumerative classification scheme, we have the first point. It is the first species of classification in the line of evolution. Library of Congress classification scheme is the best example. Under faceted classification scheme, we have the first point again. It is the latest stage in the line of evolution of classification. Colin classification scheme is the best example. In enumerative classification scheme, it provides ready-made class number for basic and compound subjects. And under faceted classification scheme, no ready-made class number is available for compound and complex subjects. Again under enumerative classification scheme, it is unable to meet the challenges for the present revolution in information processing and organization. Class numbers are not coexistive. Under faceted classification scheme, it is fully equipped to meet the challenges of information revolution. Class numbers are coextensive. In the case of enumerative classification scheme, it is unable to accommodate newly emerging subjects in affiliatory sequence among existing sequence because it do not have any explicit theory and guiding norms. In the case of faceted classification scheme, it can accommodate newly emerging subjects because it is based on explicit theory guided by postulates and principles. Under enumerative classification scheme, we have notation is pure, class numbers monolithic. And in the case of faceted classification scheme, notations are mixed, class numbers are polylithic. In the case of enumerative classification scheme, schedules are lengthy, system is difficult to design but easy to use. But in the case of faceted classification scheme, schedules are short, so easy to design, comparatively complex to use. Enumerative classification scheme index is indispensable whereas faceted classification scheme index is less used. Special schemes of library classification. 
Special classification scheme is also known as death classification scheme. The special classification scheme is the one designed to cover the subjects going with a specific basic class or another host class. These are the detailed system to classify micro documents such as periodical literature, dissertation, reports and standards pertaining to a narrow subject field. Many special classification schemes are also available on subjects like music, forestry, horticulture, public administration, architecture, Indian constitution, Indian philosophy, Indian democracy and so on. Special classifications are particularly useful and often deliberately created for use in special libraries. They clearly have no value in general public or academic libraries for the arrangement of the major part of collection. However, they may sometimes be used in part of such a large unit where the library has perhaps a very special section or an extended collection in a specific subject area such as book printing and production in art, school library etc. Now, the reason for making a special classification scheme. There are many reasons for making special classification schemes. Some of the reasons are lack of coextensiveness, lengthy class numbers, special requirement or special point of view, lack of flexibility, lack of helpful sequence, major special classification schemes. Now, we are going to discuss some examples of special classification schemes. The London classification of business studies. The first addition of this scheme founded by Vernon and Lang was published by London Graduate School of Business Studies in 1970. The London classification of business studies serves the function of both classification scheme and thesaurus. The scheme uses the principles of faceted analysis as far as possible, allowing the specification of several aspects of a subject and reducing the possibility of cross classification. It covers the study of business issues and activities using quantitative and analytical methods and the behavioral sciences and comprehends the economic and social environment within which business has to operate a set of auxiliary schedules. INSPEC classification scheme. INSPEC was started in 1967 as an outgrowth of the science abstracts service. INSPEC is a major indexing database of scientific and technical literature published by the Institute of Engineering and Technology IET and formerly by the Institution of Electrical Engineers IEE, one of the IET's forerunners. It contains over 13 million bibliographic and indexed records in the fields of physics and computer, control and mechanical engineering. Its subject coverage includes astronomy, electronics, communications, ergonomics, computers and computing, computer science, control engineering, electrical engineering, information technology and physics. It is classically simple enumerative scheme. The CI SFB system. The CI SFB began in 1966 when the Swedish SFB system was described by B. Agard Evans and Egil Nicklin and recommended as a tool for classification and filling in the building world. Initially, it was suggested that it be used in conjunction with UDC for the arrangement of libraries, but since then the system was developed considerably with the addition of new tables. It evolved under the aegis of the SFB Bureau and the International Council for Building Research Studies and Documentation and its original intention was to provide a means of coordinating the control and handling of project information. The three major facets are identified in the system namely 
elements, construction and resources. It takes fully faceted approach with the combination of notation for individual facets, the use of facet indicators such as brackets and the ability to develop and build further facets as required. Moyes classification scheme for law books. The Moyes classification scheme is a system of library classification for legal materials. It was designed by Betty Moyes and first published in 1968 with a second edition in 1982. It is used primarily in law libraries in many common law jurisdictions such as Canada, Australia, New Zealand and the United Kingdom. The scheme adopts an alphanumeric system similar to LC uh, classification system with a K representing legal materials as originally adopted from the LC scheme. FIAF classification scheme for literature on film and television. This scheme was originally devised by Michael Mowles and the first edition appeared in 1980. It is a flexible and very detailed system, primarily enumerative in nature. It also allows for some synthesis via the provision of auxiliary tables for forum, persons and technical terms. In addition, at various points in the schedules, there is a provision for the further specification of subject using UDC systematic tables. The Sheltonham classification or library classification for schools. This is very old special scheme published in 1937. It designed especially to meet the needs of school libraries. The system was adopted by the number of school librarians. It is a broad enumerative scheme which attempts to provide an arrangement on similar lines to those on which subjects are taught. The notation is mixed one which uses capital letters for the main classes, unusually Roman numerals for their divisions and Arabic numerals for the subdivision of these. Early stages library classification scheme and index. It was designed by Grampian Region Schools Library Service, targets specially the early primary years, primary 1 to 3 in school libraries and is designed to cater the needs of that user groups. It is simple and very effective. It has a straightforward and attractively illustrated manual and index, which provides guidance on the implementation of the system and its relationship with the catalog in the library. Icon class an iconographic classification system. Icono class is specialized library classification designed for art and iconography. It was originally conceived by Henry Van D. Waal and was further developed by a group of scholars after his death. Icon class system is probably the largest classification system for cultural content. Initially designed for historical imagery, it is now also used to create subject access to texts and to classify a wide range of images, including modern photography. At the moment, it contains over 28,000 unique concepts, classification types and has an entire vocabulary of 14,000 keywords. It can be consulted with the help of freely available Icon class 2100 browser. Now let us summarize what we have discussed so far. In this module, we discussed about different species of library classification schemes and special classification scheme. Classification schemes are mainly classified into two namely enumerative and faceted classification schemes. This categorization depends upon the extent of enumeration for the synthesis with the help of main schedules, 
special and common isolates. Comparison between enumerative and faceted classification schemes also included with explanation. The history of library classification shows that schemes for classification have evolved from the enumerative to faceted classification. Today, large variety of general and special classification schemes are available for classification of subjects. It can reasonably be said that the future is with the faceted systems, which are analytic synthetic in nature. The history of library classification shows that scheme for classification have evolved from the enumerative to faceted classification. Today, large variety of general and special classification schemes are available for classification of subjects. It can reasonably be said that the future is with the faceted systems, which are analytic synthetic in nature. Here are a few assignments to be worked out. First one, write short note on enumerative classification scheme. Second, briefly explain the difference between enumerative classification scheme and faceted classification scheme. Third, explain the characteristic of faceted classification schemes with examples. Fourth, what is analytic synthetic classification scheme? Fifth, compare the features of enumerative classification scheme and faceted classification scheme. Sixth, explain depth classification scheme with examples. Now I provide you a few books for further references. Analytico-synthetic classification written by Kana JK published by ESS, ESS publication, New Delhi, 1994. Second one, Theory of Library Classification, written by Krishna Kumar, published by Vikas Publishing House, New Delhi, 1979. Third one, Prolegomena to Library Classification, third edition, page 102, written by Ranganathan SR, published by Asia Publishing House, Bombay, 1967. Colin Classification, a preview, 7th edition, page 205, written by Ranganath SR, published by Sharada Ranganath Endowment, Bangalore, 1971. A New Manual of Classification, page 122, written by Marcella Rita and Newton, Robert, Published by Jayco Publishing House, Mumbai, 1997. Library Classification, Facets and Analysis, written by Hussein Shabahat. Published by Tata McGrawhill, New Delhi, 1992.